Hey there, I'm Ashley, and this is New Day with Ashley. If you're looking for inspiration to make a difference and create lasting impact, then you're in the right place. Get ready to be encouraged by the stories of my guests who have taken risks, overcome challenges, and created opportunities. It's time to make the most of your new day. My guest today brings a ton of energy and excitement with a passion for the nonprofit world. Patrick Kirby has spent nearly two decades working as a fundraiser in the nonprofit industry and is the champion cheerleader of nonprofits. Patrick is the founder of Do Good Better Consulting, author of the Amazon bestseller Fundraise Awesomer, a practical guide to staying sane while doing good, and host of the official Do Good Better podcast. Well, welcome, Patrick. Uh, Patrick Kirby, it's so great to have you. It's so nice to be here, finally. And it's a new day. It's so, it's a totally it's new, a new day. day. Yeah. And you clearly are passionate. You're bringing the energy. I've been drinking coffee <laughs> since 4:30 this morning in preparation. Oh, I got for you this. some water. So if I you know need I need to, to like... calm down. I need to. No. I need. I get it. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Uh, first of all, um, congratulations on the new show. Thank you. Um, this is super exciting. Um, uh, this is. I, I watched a couple of them and it's uh, it's great. So oh, thank I just you. it's nice to have a voice like this and a show like this to kind of feature. This is it's great. So and kudos. You know you you are a podcaster. I am. You're you're a man of many hats. Well, yes. It's, so I, tell us a little bit about because I mean how many episodes do you have? Like two hundred and at at time of taping uh, we've got two hundred and twenty released and we've got about thirty five wow. ready to go. It's a yeah. lot. And now I, that's why I empathize, <laughs> empathize with the whole uh, it's situation. It's a lot. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a lot of stuff. So yeah, I do. And you uh, do a couple yeah. a week. I do three, three a week. Three a week. Which is an insane amount <laughs> of legitimate uh, content. But we, but we've had this, uh, this belief at the, at the company just to kind of, let's give as much content away as possible mm-hmm. because we just know that if you're a small or a medium sized nonprofit that just doesn't know what on earth they're doing where do you go you got to search the internet for things you got to just you know sort of uh guess on what best practices are or have it all in one hub and have it accessible and And we wanted to be the accessible group that did that yeah so tell tell us a little bit about who patrick kirby is sure oh yeah well that's a a dangerous yeah i mean a question i got just you know, kind we've of got float. as much time as we brevity need. No. <laughs> is not my strong suit uh at all um so i uh i'm patrick kirby i'm the founder of a do good better we're a consulting firm that helps uh nonprofits suck less at fundraising um and and the reason i say that is because um most people who work in the nonprofit realm are accidental fundraisers they bump into this job they're a, they're they either like the idea or the impact that an organization does but nobody's really got there's no school there's no like For bachelor's degree in annual giving fundraising it How just to doesn't ask exist money Nobody has no. that, right? <laughs> so, um, so they they usually end up in this weird role of like, well, okay, go out and raise money either by doing events or whatever, and nobody really knows how to do that. And so, our company is basically there to help guide you on those really first steps. And then once you're good at that, then you get to go a little more advanced. And then after that, you get to be, you know, so it's yeah. it's it's a step by step process. And we just came uh, to the idea um, after doing this for a, a long time that this was kind of a, a great option. I I got my start out of um, high, uh, college okay. by working at my old high school. Um, I was a politics major, uh, which meant I was immediately unemployable uh, after college. They don't tell you that in the university system. You get a politics degree <laughs> that you just don't get jobs. They just, like, they just don't give you jobs for that. You may not actually be employed. Not, not great. Um, so thanks, counselors. Uh, no. <laughs> that was great. Um, but they said they were looking for somebody who's an alumni who uh, would like to do some events and some fundraising stuff. And I said, I got no I don't know. I'm good. I'm good. I'm in. Um, and I loved it. And I went on to the uh, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation down in the Twin Cities. And so I ran their their walk programs uh, regionally and uh, did some of their big galas. And uh, that's kind of when I really fell in love with fundraising as a thing. Um, my wife is uh, from up here. So I now live up here. Uh, That's kind of how it goes. Uh, And I got recruited out to work at the Ann Carlson Center out of Jamestown, North Dakota. I was their chief development officer for about five years. And that's where I think I really understood the the plight of some of these smaller nonprofits. I was asked to uh, sort of coach some smaller ones for for a couple of events uh, in this neck of the woods. And I was addicted to that light bulb moment where they said, oh, 
oh, it's not that difficult or it's not that hard or cool. I can do this kind of moment. And I was like, there might be a, a business model here. Right. And either uh, nobody tried it uh, or they did and they failed miserably. And I was lucky that uh, it was the former, not the latter. <laughs> and thus, Do Good Better Consulting was uh, was formed. Cool. And so that's kind of what. Yeah. And so how many years ago was that? Five. Five years. Okay. Five years ago. Wow. So we started uh, doing it amateur wise uh, about uh, seven or eight. And uh, in five years, we decided to, uh, to start this. Um, I made the great uh, uh, decision to do that immediately after our third child was born, which is a great idea if you're a no, if you're a if you're an entrepreneur or a budding entrepreneur, have a baby, have a baby, have a third baby, and then uh, be the one who has health insurance and go. You know what? I want to start my own business because that's a really great conversation to have with your spouse, and it's great. Um, and it was and it was great. It was it was it was love at first sight. We had a, a bunch of clients that we had uh, that onboarded right, and we've been sprinting, legitimately sprinting ever since. Wow. It's been fun. It's been a wild ride, yes. it sounds like. <laughs> yes, very much so. Okay, so do good better. Like, mm -hmm. I love that. Can yeah. you explain a little bit about what the meaning is, where you came up with that? Sure. Well, uh, we I've used the term do-gooders in the nonprofit realm for a long time. Sure. I think that's just kind of what we refer to ourselves mm -hmm. as. Um, and there's a moment where um, we were trying to figure out, not a business name. I had a couple of names that I had in mind. Uh, but they all sounded like law firms. And I was like, this doesn't <laughs> sound like me. And I was trying to find something that was not quirky, but at least sort of a little left to center in the sense of like what what represents a personality of, of kind of what we're trying to accomplish sure. here. And uh, it, was a, it was a moment where um, I was trying to explain what we were going to do. And I said, well, I just want to help people do good, but I just want to help them do good better. And I was like, oh, mm. the, there it is. <laughs> and it's weird enough that people go, uh, so your company is do better, gooder, gooder, better doers. Something yeah, yeah. along those lines is fine. <laughs> uh, but it just stuck. And, um, and there's, a, there's a book called um, Doing Good Better, which is about altruism in business. Um, but that was the only thing that was really kind of hmm. near it. Right. I grabbed it, and then it was to the Secretary of State's office immediately, and I was like, uh, let's, let's We're register. making it real. It's yeah. happening. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So five years, do good better. Yep. Um, you, you made a um, – you had a quote. Not a quote, mm. but you made a statement about the most dangerous phrase – in is the English language. Yeah. Always done it this way. Correct. Yeah. So why it was is that? Well, um, so it's a quote from uh, an admiral in the Navy that I totally ripped off from <laughs> uh, the, uh, it was in a school somewhere. And it, yeah, the most dangerous lang uh, phrase. Uh, phrase in the English mm -hmm. language is we've always done it that way. And, uh, and what I meant by that was it, in, in fundraising and nonprofit work mm -hmm. especially is that the old guard are so nervous about doing anything that's going to disrupt the apple cart. And I've always been or had this disruptor mindset, um, not to burn everything down to the ground, sure. uh, but just sort of say there's got to be an easier, better way. We might be overcomplicating this. We might be doing too many things in between. And from a fundraiser's perspective, simplicity is key. You know, it is, uh, it's clear over clever. Like those are the things that if mm -hmm. you are really good at, you're a wonderful fundraiser because <laughs> you don't have to confuse everybody about what you're saying. If you're an organization that, uh, that tries to help individuals who maybe have food scarcity, right? We help individuals who don't have enough food rather than complexity within the uh, uh, economic system has uh, allowed uh, or, uh, individuals to not have enough resources and that doesn't like you're zoned lost out me no idea what you do we try to help people have the basic needs they do to you know feed their families mm -hmm. that's really the the clear over clever and i think there's a resistance to um to doing something different or changing or tweaking and i think that that resistance becomes stale at an organization mm -hmm. and once you're stale you're playing catch up and i don't think that that can ever be a thing that the nonprofit realms uh really embrace and so i try to kick down those doors whenever uh whenever possible cool no yeah. i love it and you're working with all different types of organizations so you're, you're consulting mm-hmm Mm -hmm. um, all these organizations, but now you have like, I go on your website and there's a ton of information. Like you said, yeah. like we're trying to give all this information and it's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, webinars, mm -hmm. a book. What? I mean, fundraiser awesomer. I love it. Again, that's very, uh, very on brand. My, very. my mom, who's a teacher in fifth grade, um, when I, when I showed her the title yeah. and she's like, awesomer, <laughs> it's not a word. And I was like, Just yes, so you know, but <laughs> 
<laughs> but go with me on this. Uh, I want you to fundraise awesomer. And she's like, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily get it. She likes it now. Yeah. Kind of clever, but like it's, but she <laughs> was first, not a, yeah. at first. Um, no, so I, the book came out of a conversation I had with a client that was really early on. And I, and I've been working on, uh, for my own self, right. A technique of trying to like partition my time. Like I was, uh, I'm, I'm, as, entrepreneur brain yeah. people will have this all the time. We're like, I've got 20,000 ideas and I can't get to all of them. And really I was missing some of the priorities. So I was trying to frame out uh, mm. a day. I was also trying to then apply that to a fundraiser's brain because as a fundraiser, I, I couldn't do the 10,000 things that I needed to do every day. Most of them other duties as a sign <laughs> and the things that I needed to do, I couldn't get to because I couldn't you know, figure out and carve out the time to do so. So the book was based on a training I was doing with a client and their, and their CEO stopped me after one of the, the presentations and she said, um, you better, um, you better patent that or something because that's really good. <laughs> and I was like, really? So it is how it came to be was, all right, I'm going to pitch this as a concept to to teach mm. at a conference. And so I applied to the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits annual fundraising meeting. And I said, all right, this is one of those big ones. If this concept is interesting, they'll pick it up and they will ask me to present. I'd never spoken in front of anybody before, so this was kind of a wild ride anyway. <laughs> and so I submitted it and I waited. And sure enough, about two weeks later, this is, this is great. This is something we'd really want. And I'm like, oh, crap. Now i got to build a presentation. <laughs> so I build a presentation and I say, okay, well, if this presentation goes well, I'll write a manuscript for the the, the ebook or whatever the, the heck I was going to do. So I go down to the Twin Cities. I present. Um, the room was overflowingly packed. Wow. I don't know anybody here. Like I'm, I'm, it, it is just by name only this sort of five day fundraising framework that I had built out, uh, packed it. And it was, uh, it ended up being like the number one rated, um, uh, presentation in the entire conference. Wow. And I was like, Oh crap. Now I got to write a manuscript. Uh, so I, uh, so I set out on writing the book and, and it was just as this weird, uh, process. I'd never written anything that long, uh, since a dissertation in college. Um, it was you know, a politics, so clearly it was worthless. Um, so I wrote, and then, um, on new year's Eve of, uh, 2018 is the, when I, I kind of, uh, got done with it at the West Fargo public library as I put the finishing dot on it and I send it to my editor and I, I said, let's, Let's rock and roll. Yeah. And a couple of months later, it was it was live. Yeah, awesome. So people can buy this. Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Go to Amazon, and it's and uh, I love right there. a practical guide to staying sane while doing good. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's one of those things where that's my whole purpose of not only do good better, but it was part of the book is that you don't need to be insane to be <laughs> doing good. And uh, if I can simplify that, and so the whole concept of the book is that you just do one thing a day every day of the week to move the needle forward. So we plan on Mondays, we execute on Tuesdays, we document all these awesome conversations we have on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we find some reason to celebrate because we are live in the Midwest. We think it's bragging. So we got to like learn how to celebrate things. Right. And then we yeah. end the week with appreciation. And then that, that thank you note, that thank you meeting, that thank you phone call you make on Friday when you wrap everything around and you're ready to plan your week, the last thing people remember you is that really authentic gratitude rather than mm. me asking you for money and they're more <laughs> likely to answer the phone and then you start your week all over again. I love it. And so that's like really come because you've been in those shoes. Yeah. So you, you know what it takes, what it looks like and have seen success with within the organizations you work for, but then your clients also. Right, uh, and uh, more <laughs> importantly, uh, the uh, the abject failures uh, yeah. that I that I hope to make everybody else uh, try to avoid that I went through. Sure. Um, and that this would probably help. And mm -hmm. I think there's a difference between uh, sort of an academic type of training where you're like, philosophically speaking, if you do all these things <laughs> and these numbers and blah blah blah. And what I love about our company, and I love about talking with with nonprofits every single week or three times a week on our podcast is I'm getting real time information, boots on the ground, what's working and what's not. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't take three years to publish something. We immediately come out with a webinar to train on it. Right. Or we can immediately post something or immediately write a blog about it so that I'm sort of disseminating the information that we're getting from those who are doing the work that's making the world better and trying to get it in front of as many people as possible immediately. And that that quick uh, ability to just um, uh, learn and say and do is I think an advantage uh, that a lot of nonprofits uh, now have 
if they just kind of hang out with us and and sort of follow, follow along. Yeah. yeah follow what you're yeah. doing so walk walk me through a little bit um i can relate to you a lot in being an entrepreneur and having to do all the things putting yourself out there like mm. hey i got this great idea oh someone bit great now i gotta figure it out yeah. but i think that's like such good advice to other people like okay overcoming challenges taking mm -hmm. that risk you know walk us through kind of some of those things of like key things that you did mm. or have done yeah like that um speaking events like yeah. that was new yeah but how do you t you know teach other people to like you gotta put yourself out there yeah that was well okay um i may have had an <laughs> advantage because i was a theater kid in high school and college right so oh, now, i think yeah right I was so it, not <laughs> so it may so that may come as a it comes as a shock i'm Shocker, sure to everybody yeah. who yeah. who i who i run in circles with but that was one of the best things that i'd ever done um, and sort of the best lessons I've learned was, you know, how to how to react on stage or how to um, in the moment make a decision on a character or something mm -hmm. else. And and that kind of filtered through to a business world. Like, oh, I got to make a decision immediately on how I'm going to do this. So my comfortability on stage, I think, had a lot to do with just me being on stage a lot. But but one of those things, and we all have this, and I'm, I, I, if you're an entrepreneur and you're listening, you <laughs> always, you have this, which is like, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And you have this thing in the back of your brain, this, uh, this sort of uh, self-conscious. Other I, voice, I don't know. Horrible voice, right? <laughs> um, I had been... And even today I have that when I get in front of maybe somebody or an organization that I even look up to or who's looking to me for advice. And I have this moment of like, what am I going to teach them? And I and, and you got to realize that your perspective is invaluable to people who've never heard your perspective. Sure. That's and if point. you don't say it, they don't grow. And if they don't mm -hmm. say it and you think you're not giving it, to, uh, it, it a chance to, uh, to go, you're keeping another group or another person from growing because you could help them and you just think that you're not in that uh in that realm i'm sure you have this um it, it's similar right right so um you have a a wonderful podcast you've got a platform that people can come on and kind of talk about their their businesses and their passions and how they're trying to make the world a better place what you have to offer is helping them and sort of navigating what works and what doesn't on a podcast right so but you might have you might introduce or, or have somebody on that has been doing this a long time mm -hmm. but maybe they're not framed right or maybe sure. they're not speaking into the microphone or whatever oh. your expertise <laughs> really your they expertise have Invisalign in twins <laughs> what's up uh Invisalign twins <laughs> uh, but you might you might have a great uh, you, piece you of advice you sound great though by the way well you do too and I think it's just a self-conscious <laughs> thing that we are both experiencing and that was my favorite part about us uh, grabbing coffee the other day was was uh I tried to order coffee for you yes and we just had like whatever's in the straw and he goes uh yeah he drinks anything with a straw I'm like because he has Invisalign, I'm like, no way, me too. Yeah, I know. I'm okay. Great, Twinsies. we can order the same thing. Yeah. It was, it was perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but right there, that's an that's an example. Like, how do you uh, suggest to others who may have uh, an Invisalign or a bracelet or whatever? <laughs> that's an that's a really prime example of using your own um, expertise and knowledge on how you've interacted on camera sure. to help other people do great stuff. And um, and it's been very tough to trust yourself trust myself on what it, what I know and and make sure that you know the experience that I've had I know it works so why would I try to prevent that from anybody else and then just stepping out and just doing it and then again what's the worst that can happen right someone people don't says no. someone says no or maybe one person doesn't like you you're mm -hmm. gonna resonate with more people if you buy into what you're saying than you are not and it's kind of, and that's kind of crazy and just too. be authentic to you you Always. know like you got to be you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to put awesomer on a book. Yes. If you were, yeah. Why not? Um, <laughs> and I think and I think that's the other thing too. You're you're as a unique individual or a unique business uh, entity, right? Mm -hmm. You are you've already taken the leap to start a business or, tar or taken a leap to do something or start something new. Why stop? Like who's like what what's going to well, that doesn't help anybody <laughs> at all and uh and sometimes you got to do something for you to explore what you want to do in the first place like i never knew how i never knew i was going to get into podcasting right i just knew that the pandemic hit and i had space to put a podcast studio in okay well that 
that seemed to be great. I, I did the, if I build it, I'll maybe have to do it. And it started off by just interviewing groups that I thought were really neat. Sure. And it turned out like people are asking me questions on the podcast. So it's like, okay, well then I'll adjust the topic of conversation to then become something that people are really interested in. Mm, okay. And that, what they were interested in was also what I was passionate in, about. And then that grew into now what it is today. Um, but it would have taken a very easy step of saying, eh, I'll do that later. Sure. Rather than, oh, yeah. why not? Let's just do it now. <laughs> why not? It's not going to hurt. That kind of happened to me. It's something I've always wanted to do. And it was just kind of out of like, now you're doing it. Yeah. You're well, now doing it. Well, walk me through that because I'm always <laughs> curious of that as a, as, a, as a podcaster too. What was that moment where you're like, okay, I've always wanted to do it. What was that moment where you're like, ah, I'm going to do it now. That, what, was that, what was that line that you crossed that said, nope. I'm going to do this. This is the content that I'm going to make. This is the content that I kind of want to do. Well, it, it helped that a KFGO provided me um, a space, mm -hmm. um, production of like things I didn't know how to do. And so it, it, it was a little bit of a different walk. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, you know, different things like, oh, that, that door closed. Mm -hmm. Well, this one flung way open. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, and willing to take a chance. I, what I love about that, though, too, is that you that that door flew open, but it was a mystery of like I don't really know what's gonna go yeah. beyond beyond don't that door, know. and you still did it, right? Rather than yeah. going back to a safe route on <laughs> something else, and I think that's where that's... I think that's where the best creatives um, and and the most interesting people live is the ones that go. I don't really know what I'm doing that here. That one's shut. So yeah. which other which other door should I do? <laughs> it's the safe door over here, yeah. or it's the one that's um, the the road less traveled kind of thing. It's mm -hmm. the it's the way that that door that you didn't or that you passed was the was the way that things always have been and you went through there the we door yeah. that it didn't and i think that is an intriguing moment and i think that's what makes uh entrepreneurs like yourself and and like others so unique and interesting is that we crave that weird thing that everybody else <laughs> yes. is terrified of and we're like ah, we'll give it a chance why what's the worst can happen i mean yeah yeah and then and we do it and then sometimes it works and sometimes it feels miserably, but we're, but we, but you, we did it. Anybody could start a podcast like you. Mm -hmm. Most people don't. Sure. And so the audacity of just starting a show like this is pretty awesome. So kudos to you. Well, That's awesome. You. Yeah. Well, and for you too. Yeah. So that was right during the pandemic. Yeah. You were, it was, it was you right at the beginning. I got a big boy office. All right. So I was sitting at my, uh, <laughs> my, uh, my uh, kitchen counter and working for about two years. And, um, and my wife got tired of paperwork uh, in between where we were eating dinner. dinner. Yeah. And um, she said, you just need to, to leave. And I said, that's okay. <laughs> so, uh, so I got a big boy office. And it was a couple months right before the pandemic hit. And so I was like, well, great. I got an office that I, what, the advantage was I got to go someplace during a pandemic that was not my house. Right. So jealous. So right. jealous. So of you. The, I'm like, <laughs> no. I'm like, crap, I have an office and I don't know what to do with it. I'm not bringing people in there, but at least I got to go to create. Right. Um, and then I was looking at a, on a way to like, oh, I can't do speaking gigs anymore. So how do I broadcast some of these ideas, mm. especially during the pandemic where people were just, oh, I'm not really sure what to do. How do you do it? Well, let's start a podcast or let's start webinars and let's start going live every other day and just kind of and reaching out to people who need our help. And it was out of others need for help is what we created as part of that new, you know, I hate the word pivot, but we pivoted and we leaned into where do people want to go for information? They, there's not a lot to do. Um, uh, we did a, a conference. We do a conference every year, the okay. Do-Gooders Conference. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was in person year number one in 2018. Well, 2019 or, uh, or 2019, 20, uh, 20 came around, couldn't do that anymore. So we went right to a virtual event and we were the first conference in this region to go virtually oh, at wow. all. I mean, nobody else was doing that. We were the first ones. They're just canceling. Canceling completely. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, we're going to do this. Now, dreaming big and doing all these things big and we used our friends uh, mobile pro who are here who are star rock star partners in that whole thing we did two separate sound stages in order to separate everybody because remember mm -hmm. at that time like everybody was like terrified of being even in a 20 foot right, proximity radius, right yeah. so we did a uh, concert series in between speakers in another sound stage across town <laughs> and then we did our other one at the pines which was like 
the first venue, if it was the first event that they had done that wasn't a wedding, sure. we're like, we'll do it. Well, this yeah. sounds we pretty need interesting. Space, yeah. When we did our first one and our second one, we were like, can we just use the same space and we'll just do it virtually? They're like, yeah, that sounds good. Great. So we beamed in people from across the, the globe wow. to participate and speak at Hmm. on it virtually and that set us on this path to kind of you know sort of uh, push our uh, podcast and our content in the digital form and we were not limited by just being in Fargo North Dakota anymore and that's been this really interesting path that we've taken which is this oh boy our world's our oyster kind of bit which is really really kind of fun I think I was going to say about that like that whole pivot Mm -hmm. opened up so many other avenues and doors yeah. and uh you know regions yeah. and just because now you're going on a tour is that with yeah a that's, conference yeah or, okay so the do Gooders conference is going to so we did our last one uh, last year in person mm-hmm. and um we decided that um we were going to go to where people had been reaching out to see if we could ever come down and do a, a speaking event or whatever sure. we couldn't get to so we're actually taking the entire conference on the road so we turn five years old in September, and, and a couple of weeks later, we take the do Conference on the road. We're doing a six-city Midwest tour in three weeks, and it's going to be like, uh, you know, sort of releasing the album and going on tour <laughs> to support it kind of bit. We're getting like 80s Def Leppard like t-shirts and concert tees with the dates on the are back. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. We totally cool. are. And then we're going to go, we're going to go to Des Moines and St. Paul, Minnesota and Madison, Wisconsin and Omaha, Nebraska and Bismarck, North Dakota and uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, not Fargo. We're just going to try to expand our hmm. sphere of, of, of do gooding to that Midwest sort of feel. We, we've been, we've worked with uh, mostly Midwest nonprofits. We speak the language. We understand that we're in flyover country. We're not East or West Coast kind of uh, folks who have a very different approach to fundraising. And what good is it if we don't go to those who need it the most in places that don't have conferences like this stop by and we wanna be those. So yeah, so we're hitting the road. It's getting a fan so and it'll be Nonprofits, nonprofit leaders, mm-hmm. okay. yep. executive directors, even board mm-hmm. direct board uh, board members that get to show up, and we're it's a working session, and it's going to be fun, and we're just going to do lunch and coffee and donuts, and then just rock and roll. It's going to be super great. What's some of the best advice that you've received starting your own business? Oh man, that is uh, that is great. I, so when before I started my own business, mm-hmm. um, I had I had everything built. Right, hmm. I had everything built. I had the website built. I did my headshots. I had my logo. I had my uh, Facebook page. I had the announcement that said I'm starting my own company wow. done. Before and you ever started. Before I even started, I I was um, I wanted. I knew I was going to do it. I was going to do it. I just couldn't pull the trigger. And so I met with um, people that I knew that started businesses, and Good. I talked to them. All the time, I go, I don't know when to pull the trigger. I don't know what to do. I don't know when that's going to be. And I will never forget um, the conversation I had with Rebecca Undum. Okay. Uh, she is a uh, she's a speaker, and she's an author, and she's a coach, and she runs uh, Growing Small Towns out of Oaks, North Dakota, and she's brilliant. And I used to work with her at the Ann Carlson Center uh, for a brief moment of time, and we'd been buddies uh, for, for forever. And I brought that up with her again, and she said, what's the worst that's going to happen? She goes, can you get a job if this thing blows up in six weeks or <laughs> nine weeks? Can you get another job? And I go, yeah. She goes, okay. Well, then... Then what's, what's, yeah, I go, yeah. dang it. <laughs> that was it. And I go, I, of course I could. If this fails miserably, what's, what's the big deal? And it was positioned as like, am I gonna, how am I gonna be an example for my kids if they have a big, hairy, audacious goal mm. and they pause? Mm-hmm. Um, am I doing them a service by not taking a leap of faith with myself? Am I being an example as a dad? And I know that's, that's like it's no, a little it's... philosophical and stuff, but like, what am I doing to make them um, not proud of me? I wasn't interested in that, but what am I doing to lead by example? If they are ever hesitant about doing something, are they going to look to me and go, "Well, I mean, Dad started his own business"? Because that's the same way I looked at my dad when he started his own business. Mm. You know, he uh, he had three kids in private Catholic school, and then decided to quit his job, and then he didn't take a paycheck for a year and a half. And he slept on the couch for six months. I sure. watched it in real time because he 
he knew he had something, he trusted his gut, he knew he was uh, capable of doing it, and then just pulled the trigger. And I saw him suffer through it, and I saw him uh, sort of persevere, and then come out on top at the end, and I was like, I can do that too, I've seen the blueprint. And if I don't give that blueprint back to my kids, I said, what was that gonna be? So combined with that advice, and then just this will to go, if my kids ever have something that they wanna do, I want to have I want to be the example to encourage them to do it and then put all effort into it and if it fails it's okay because yeah, I've had yeah. a lot of these things that didn't work out these ideas that just flopped and um I want them to let you know that that's not a bad gig it's fine because you're doing what you like to do and I, I think to value happiness at, at a job knowing that you can do things and help others. I mean, that is my biggest joy all the time. And that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think even like the bigger risk is to not have tried. Right. I mean, you want, I don't want to have that regret right. uh, at all, right? We have a finite amount of time on this earth, right? And I'm, I don't, I don't want to live with that. Oh, God, boy, what? Oh, boy, what I wish if? I could have yeah. done that. Yeah. Um, I get to now say, I got to do that. Yeah. And that's kind of a cool feeling. Um, and I wanna, Or even like, I tried that. I tried that. Yeah. That did not work. No, I didn't. I know But I now, tried it. I know that now. Yeah. I know what not to do now. <laughs> and and I think people are sort of hesitant about that all the time. And and, and being risk averse is is something that we're trained to, to mm -hmm. be. And um, yeah, I like encouraging those. And again, people who are starting other small businesses, I love helping and love sort of giving any piece of advice that I have. Because I go, it's not, it's lonely. This whole entrepreneur thing is just a <laughs> lonely road where you get random pieces of advice from people. The other piece of advice that I got from somebody else um, that I give to other um, people who are budding entrepreneurs is never take advice from somebody who's never started a business themselves. Mm. Right. What? Yeah. They've never so taken they've a risk, the but they've got. Oh, yeah. They've read the textbook. <laughs> they know. They took no. the course, but they never did. Mm -hmm. And But they're right. the ones who have the most amount of advice for you, even though they've never <laughs> taken it or done that risk themselves. And that was such a freeing response for people who said, well, that's kind of a stupid idea. I go, no, your face is stupid. This is a good idea. <laughs> because but I go to somebody else who, who was an entrepreneur, entrepreneur that said, well, that's a dumb idea, but here's how you could probably pull that off. And I go, well, that's the advice that I want to take. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have some sort of negative naysayer that says that's not fun or cool or awesome. I want them to be critical about it if they've got some useful piece of information, but never uh, taking that full advice from them. But he was not taking that risk. Yeah. It was always something that I've always sort of uh, tried, tried to do. Well, yeah. so surrounding yourself truly with people yeah. who will support you too. Yeah. So even having that in check. Right. First. And hey, if I don't have those people in mm -hmm. my life right now, like I've got people, you know, um, maybe an entrepreneur is like, I, I don't know anyone like that. Right. You got to go and find them. Exactly. And and, and we, we exist. We exist. And we're always willing to sort of give oh, up yeah. some time to do that <laughs> because we um, and I don't, do you have this too where you get you get as excited about somebody else More doing excited. something? we become like other people's biggest I'm like I'm like way more excited to work on someone else's business yes. than my own. Yes. Yes. Because I, I think that's part of the whole, how do we make everybody win? Mm -hmm. Because by doing that, we, you know, sort of that rising tide helps all ships. And we know that the, the more we give, the more we're going to get. Like Paul McCartney was right. The <laughs> Beatles were right. As much as you want to not, um, we, we give more, we get more. And uh, in the entrepreneurial world, I think that's super important too. And it's really important to remember. Um, and, and it's humbling to know that people maybe ask for advice. And it goes back to that, um, am I worthy of giving advice? Yeah, I've been doing this for five years. That's, yeah. that's worth a pat that's, on the back. Yeah. And I think we get to do that as entrepreneurs too. Like this is a risk that we got to take. Cool. Yeah, D don't rest <laughs> on your laurels too much, but give yourself some recognition on actually taking the risk in doing that. Like again, uh, how many podcasts have you done? Or, uh, oh, released, or I don't know. I mean, We've got yeah, a bunch, a bunch. Yeah, right. Good 14, kudos. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Twenty. You yeah. know, the average person stops doing a podcast after like eight episodes. You're way past wow. that now, right? So yeah. you're like a superhero amongst podcasters already. So I think we deserve to 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 recognize ourselves as doing that too, and and. 
and as and as a humble Midwesterners, right, who don't like to brag a little <laughs> bit, right, we don't want to do that. It's not bragging; it's celebrating. And uh, if we don't celebrate those wins, we 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 don't celebrate the ones who helped us get there in the first place too. And and that's really important. And that we talk about that in the fundraising stuff. We talk about that in the nonprofit work. Is if you're not celebrating a win with your donors, your donors don't know that their money has done anything to make a difference. Right. So you make sure that. you have yeah. to celebrate. You know, brag about it, but you have to celebrate it because they want to be part of winning teams and that begets momentum and that, you know, uh, encourages other people to go, I want to be a part of that. They're, oh, they seem to be having fun and, yeah. and doing great things. And that positive outlook uh, and really this sort of um, putting good into the world sort of vibe yeah. gets you more good vibes, I'm telling you. Right. It is. It is an energy thing because, totally yeah, is. lots of good Not vibes. Not woo-woo in energy, but no. kind of woo-woo in energy. Yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> But but definitely yeah. like you know that positivity. Mm -hmm. um, so, what do you love most about what you do? Oh geez, um, I I love the I love the light bulb moment okay. more I, than I did anything hear you say in the that world. Earlier. Right, like, that, it, it, that's yeah. my favorite thing in the entire world. Uh, and I love um, I love people who I get to talk to later, and um, who say I figured it out. <laughs> uh, you you kind of maybe helped uh, me on that right path, and I figured it out because of that. Um, and that I don't I don't make a dollar from that, um, but that is the non monetary joy that I get from doing the work that I do, is seeing the successes that other organizations get, and then what they do with it, and yeah. where they go with it. And, you know, I I had a, I get to be a part really of some wins early on that I get to be a part of like multiple organizations. So I get to be a part of hundreds of not thousands of organizations every year awesome. and have a little yeah. bit of part. Or if I gave a speaking gig here, or I did a presentation there or a webinar there, some little nugget of information that may have gotten them down the road or moved the needle forward a little bit, I get to have a small part in that. And that that is the- That fills your cup. Oh my gosh, every single time. I would do it for free. And that's, I think, you know, I, when you love what you, you do. Do you ever do that where you're mm -hmm. like, I'd help another oh, business? Oh, I've done so many things for free. <laughs> and you would. Because I enjoy it. I'm like, people are like, you should charge for that. Well, I really like doing it. I know. I mean, sure, I should. Maybe I will. Want, you know. If you win, if you ever win the lottery. This was years ago. Yeah. If you ever win the lottery, would you still do that kind of stuff? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I, I would. Would you? Yeah. All the time. Um, and I think that's, um, that's how, you know, you're in the right position. Or I'd maybe have like a different couch. Maybe. I don't know. This is a very nice couch. I don't know. I like, I do like I the couch. I do appreciate yeah. the couch. Uh, yeah. Maybe a little, a couple more, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. a little more um, bling on the, uh, on the, on the couches, but, but you do it. And I think that's what makes a great, I think that's what makes a great entrepreneur or a great business owner or know you're in the right space is that if you would actually legitimately do that. Continue doing yeah. that. Yeah. So where can people find you? Where can they get your book? How can they get a hold of you? I mean, there's many a ways. Uh, you can uh, you can you go send to me a very large no. There's I'm just very large list of things. Uh, it's, that entrepreneur brain goes. I need to be everywhere. Uh, you can find it. me at uh, dogoodbetterconsulting.com. That's got usually every link out there. Uh, you can find fundraise awesomer. A Practical Guide to Staying Sane While Doing Good on Amazon. Uh, or you can find us at uh, on, on Facebook or uh, just Do Good Better Consulting and find us and, and join the conversation. And if you're a nonprofit and you just don't know where to start, it's a great resource. It's just there's a bunch of freebies and a bunch of webinars. Um, or you can go <laughs> to uh, Apple Podcasts and uh, type oh, yeah. in the official Do Good Better Podcast and you can uh, join the crew there and... The countless Take episodes that yeah. are, yeah, it's over and over again. You so. have great guests, lots of information. Yes. And I think it's not even for nonprofits. Other people just in business in general yeah. can benefit from a lot well, that's, of it. That's the best part about, I think, what I do too, is that everything that we do in the nonprofit world, you can do in sales or marketing, right? You need to build better relationships. You need to, you know, so be authentic, tell great stories. Everybody who is in marketing, sales, or fundraising needs to know those kind of things. And the type of guests we get, which is the best part about this podcast. I mean, you know this too, yeah. right? You get to reach out to somebody like, hey, would you like to be on the podcast? You're like, yeah, I'd be honored to do that. The most random, big name people, I you you just ask them and they say yes. And because they love this medium, they love to right. talk about and they love to teach too. And um, and I think starting a podcast was the was was great because um, 
I got to meet so many more people that I would have never gotten to meet in the sure. first place. And it's just a, an array of people who are way smarter than me coming on and talking <laughs> with me. And then I get to dole out that information uh, into the interwebs. Into and and likewise, you know, being able to facilitate different people. Yes. And connect them with other people. Yeah. It's, and just be and just have really good conversations. It. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Patrick. Thank you for bringing all your energy, all your positivity, all your do-gooding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you can i use that word yes you may I, it's a different word i will but. give you i will give you uh carte blanche for that uh thank you first of all uh and thanks to the uh to the to the crack squad that puts uh this all uh, together and edited too <laughs> madison so many yeah. of you uh, uh, uh but yeah. it, but it's but it's really great and i and i love what you're doing and and great and, and kudos and congratulations on launching the show it's thank uh you. it's awesome to have you here again there's so many good uh, voices out there and there's a lot of people who could start a podcast there's not a lot of people who do so kudos for you and uh, and kudos <laughs> to you so well, thank you so much yeah. appreciate it absolutely wow what a great episode thank you so much for joining me it's always so inspiring sharing these stories remember to like and subscribe to the podcast i would love if you could leave me a five-star review on spotify and apple Podcasts. this helps us reach and engage with more people join me next week and until then make the most of your new day